Hello and welcome back to Torment Tides of Numenera. So to recap, last time we talked a little bit more to our new friend Rin, who uh, seemed very skeptical about the ideas of joining us. Um, helped our new friend Finzen, who's got some kind of crazy thing going on with this levy that like sees an alternate future that he didn't do. Met the nutball Jernop here, who uh, stuck a bit of Numenera in our head, where now we can hopefully identify some new ones. Met a nice kid that, what's her name, the midwife, um, Tamaz sent us to go help, convinced him to replace his skin, well, his appearance, and that seemed to turn out pretty well, and was a dick to a cultist here who was a dick to me first, and wanted to know who'd been digging through my, um, the ruins of my old house, and apparently there are some little punks here, so I'm gonna go check and see if it's the people I recognize. You know, do I have might? I should, I was gonna say. Okay, I don't want to go crazy, but let's take a 70% roll. Ooh, success! The smell intensifies as you heave aside a slab of ceiling. A swarm of startled insects spins away into the sky, revealing the body of a young woman, torn and crushed. An invisible hand rips the air from your chest and the strength from your legs. You fall, feeling a presence close around you, a heat on your back. We're odd. Uh, who's that? Your words are a whisper. You can barely breathe now, and the heat fills you like a fever. Suddenly, a cool hand covers your burning eyes. A smooth arm folds over your I'll stomach. That. And just like that, the heat is gone. You whirl around. No one is there. But you sense something has changed in the labyrinth. Our new reflection... The labyrinth! So that's where we go when we die. And I have not yet found another way to get back in there. And I also haven't found a way to just, like, stab myself. So... Let's go. I'm not real sure... Um, let's not do this at the moment. We'll come back. Oh no, what if I can only do one upgrade? Because they weren't expensive. It's only one, that's okay. Can we still do stuff? Yes! Okay, good. Ho ho ho, we will be back, my friend. Oh, do I love upgrades. I have to screw around with this puny meat sack. And we still have to help rescue the electric monster over here. By talking to what's his name over there. But I'm going to try to, like, stay a little more focused. Good to see you again, sir. How can I help you? Have you and your friends been picking through the ruins near that chirurgical parlor? He nods. That was us. I found some food, but we already ate it. And Avina got some kind of Numenera box. He covers his mouth. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. You're not going to take it away from her, are you? Um, well, it's mine. <sighs> so... It's obvious the right answer is to say no. Let's not worry about it. Let's just talk about something else. Alright. Um, because, you know, I'm going to help solve the problem of getting this, uh, of getting Stitches to escape. So I'm thinking, let's, uh, let's not be a jerk now, because maybe we will have, um, an option to get it from her as a gift or something later. I've decided I like him, by the way. Eridus, I mean. Without. Oh, and I gotta come talk to Drunken Master here too at some point. But again, focus. Okay, good. Fine. I'm not even sure if I found all the areas in Saga's Cliffs yet. And this whole Tide thing is really starting to bug me. For a game called Tides of Numenera, I can't help noticing that I'm on like eight hours in and I still don't know a damn thing about them or know how to use them. <sighs> Probably missing something really basic. Ah, okay, good. So here we are down here. And we're going up to chat with... Where is what's-her-name with the beads? Did I look at this before? Scintillating blue dome, that's kind of neat. Oh, that keeps going. Hmm. Where was... Let's see here. Tranquility. Am I in the wrong spot? Sorrow's Prey. Okay, we saw this. The Dendro Herd didn't have anything useful to say. 
Find a way to communicate with the shadowy reflection that has appeared in the labyrinth. It's really annoying this doesn't scroll well. When I discovered the body of a young woman in the ruined house, a new reflection began to take shape in my mind. In order to interact with it, I'll need to form a stronger connection. Scavengers picked the house, the cast-off's house clean. Someone near the house might be able to tell me if they spotted anyone. And we saw the kids. Okay. And we looked through my house. Okay, Weaver's son, where is she? Cliffside, so that's where I am, right? I'm not stupid. No, this is the care. Wait, what? Um. Well, here's the airship captain. We'll come back and talk to him, too. Am I in the right spot? I know you're yelling at your screen right now. Let's I can go. hear you. I'm just ignoring you. I decided that is me, by the way. I look good with bug eyes. Not gonna lie. Not a look I expected to rock, but, uh... Here we are. Okay, does this tell us? There's us, Thread Thicket. No, this is the government square. So... <sighs> feeling really stupid. Council Tower, Underbelly. Here, let's go to the Underbelly, because that comes out at some different spots. I'm going. Plus, it's kind of neat. It's slightly irritating that this makes me say something to climb down, but here we go. I just got like eight emails in a row here. Hold on a second. Huh, junk. Nothing. Okay. Okay, so... Where's my exits? To Circus Miner, Cliff's Edge, and the chapel. Oh, the Stitcha. Um, ooh, good point, me. Let's... Okay, focus. Wait, this is the right way. Where am I going? Cliff's Edge. Not the collapsed tunnel. Right. So we're going yes. this way. For only being in, like, this one town, I feel like I should really have a better handle on the zones I'm in. <sighs> My spatial reasoning is not awesome. Okay, Cliff's Edge. Oh, okay, here. So, yeah. So I must have been about 20 feet away from her. So who's... Crashed airship. Hmm... Here. Wow, so that entire fetch quest was about a hundred feet apart. <sighs> now I know it's like uh, being on the other side of the monitor yelling at the LPR, by the way. What now? So, I need to talk to you about Pico. I? What of him? I solved his problem. Have you? Mother Temez's eyes on focus, and her fingers trace the borders of the hollow bead. Mayhap you did, she says at last. A charming smile can get a lad out of most problems. Until it can't, of course. She shakes her head. I know you did what you thought was right, but we know that life is more than one choice, don't we? And he'll make the next one on his own, mayhap. She roots her out in a saddlebag at her, at her hip. Take the call, lad. You earned it. Yes. This is a shield. Only used by the last cast-off. Mother Tomas claimed to have found the membrane that protected you during your birth in the skies over Sagus Cliffs. She used the membrane to craft a shield that is transparent and thin, but surprisingly tough. Plus two to might pool. Oh, that's interesting. Why did I not have a weapon equipped? Huh. May that's medium. This is light. I feel daggerish. I don't know. Neat. All right. Well, that was an excellent choice. Thanks for your help, team. So, um, do we go back to the Stitcha? I can't believe I've already forgotten what it was I was talking about. 
Or do we try to... Um, oh yeah, we've got to go back to the uh, Order of Truth people. So we have to convince Rune to join our party. We have to find the book. I have no idea where that would be. Okay, we're tracking down the murderer. A hidden enemy. Oh, okay, that's right. That's right. And we're going to help it escape because this guy seems like a dick. Oh, I haven't talked to him yet. Shaky foundations, airship thief. Bring Eridus. Um, I should find a way to bring Eridus before Renio to account for his actions. You know, actually, I am going to do that. Just because I like you doesn't really give you the right to um, break other people's shit. So, I don't remember if I talked to Lord Vincan or not. I think I did, but let's just go look quick. Declaiming to the crowd is a well-dressed but sickly-looking man, short, dumpy, and an unhealthy shade of yellow. Despite this, he has the proud demeanor and the stentorian voice of a much louder voice of a much louder, a much louder man. He booms at you as you approach. Ah, another likely fellow. Excellent. The people have called for deliverance from this ravaging Stitches, and a hero has arrived. Most courageous of you. All you have to do is be the first to find the rogue Stitches that's been terrorizing Cliff's Edge. Return here and tell me precisely where it is, and I'll take it from there. He pats you on the shoulder. And you'll be rewarded, I promise you. As the head of a slave family, I'll owe you a favor. And my favor carries a great deal of weight. You seem like a dick. I'm not going to tell you where it is. I'm not going to admit to anything. I don't care what you have to say. I am interested in who you are, though, and the slave families. He puts a hand to his chest and raises his chins. I am Yars Vunken of House Vunken, one of the most respected of the slave families. I also have the honor of serving on the council. He looks around him uneasily. They don't usually descend to this neighborhood, but in such a crisis, one must put one's finer feelings aside and do what one can for one's city. Hmm. That seems a little odd. So you don't come down here. Why do you care about the stitches? Mm-hmm. He puffs up with pride. We are the descendants of the slaves who rose up with Chile the Great. They smashed the oligarchs who ruled this city and replaced their despotism with a fair and egalitarian leadership, creating a city where anyone can achieve anything if they only try. Uh-huh. So you replaced the oligarchs with other ones. Do you know anything about Makina? I don't know who that is, and by the sound of it, I don't want to. She sounds like a dreadful person. Are you sure you don't know Makina? He avoids your gaze. I know of her. That's not the same as knowing her. And I don't know her as... What was it? Metkina? I only know her as the White Death. The council has had... Mm, dealings with her before. Alright. Farewell. So... What was I going to do? Let's talk to the Stitcho, but first let's go talk to the dude about his poor airship. No. We'll go back there in a minute. Yes. Let's go talk to the Stitcho first. Maybe I should just do these in alphabetical order. That would probably help. I'm really pleased I got extra evasion. That's great. Okay. Let's talk to Chikak and see what he has to say. Cheap and tasty meat straight from the vat. Oh, there's a lot more of them. Oh, they're all standing on top of each other. Okay. Chikak regards you silently and then begins its pantomime. The scent of tunnel grubs and sharp metal fills the air. As usual, its chittering makes no sense to me. It manages to choke out a few words of truth. What do you want? God, I wish I... Mm. So I found a Stitches in Cliff's Edge. It's hiding in a refuse heap, and the humans want to kill it. Can you help? It looks at you for a long moment, as if it can't believe what it heard. Is weak, outcast, not feed self, burden on bro broodmates, should be dead. The odor that rises from the Stitches is dry and musty. The scent of an insect's corpse curled on a windowsill. It's disgusting. Hmm. Weak or not, it doesn't deserve to die at the hands of a mob. It's your kin. Oh, and I have to do this on my own. No, I can't. That's obnoxious. I can only get to 50-50, and that'll use up my entire... Uh, well, if it's a burden on your people, I won't interfere. 
Stitch of business for Stitcha. Ah, crap. Can I not go back and try that again? Seriously? Son of a bitch. Great. All right. Great. I should have done the roll. That's frustrating. Okay, I strongly approve of irrevocable decisions, but that should really have told me that if I said that, that I wouldn't have a chance to try to say it again. I thought that it would give me the chance to come back later and decide whether or not that's really something I wanted to do. That's frustrating. That's the first time I've gotten irritated at this game. Hmm. This is going to be trouble. Not really interested in making nice with the aristocracy. I mean, it'd probably help me along, but I don't know. That's just... I don't know. Alright. Airship captain. So, Eratus. Time to face the music. Handsomely. I assume. Oh, really? I can't... I can't talk to him? What? Right. I already found the thief. It's right here. I should find a way to bring Eratus before Renio to account for his actions. I wonder if I just have to talk to him. Eratus, buddy old pal. You catch Eratus staring at the sky with a distant look in his eyes. His strangely pale skin is nearly bronze in the golden glow surrounding him. I should him. climb a building. No. A tower. And jump off the top. Should it be on fire? Yes. Yes and yes. Do you want a man who can bake you a cake in a kitchen he built with his own two hands? Not sure I like where this is going. You don't, he says, crestfallen. It sounded promising. But you're right. I've been climbing and leaping off a lot of things re lately. I wouldn't want to get into a rut. That distant look resurfaces along with the need so deep it approaches hunger. I think we're going to have a lot of fun together. I feel it. I'm just planning ahead anyway for if things get... You know, boring. Yes! I have to be moving. Boring seconds turn into boring minutes, and then entire hours where nothing happens. And then, you're dead of old age, he says, wiping away tears. You aren't here to talk about me, he blinks. Or are you? That's surprisingly perceptive. Um... I don't have any questions. I'm not surprised, he says, please. I'm incredibly interesting. What do you want to know? I've never heard the name Eridus before. Names mean things? He says gaping. I thought they were just there to put words on faces. It should mean fast or improbably handsome, but I have no idea. Do you know what your name means? Callus Jesus says, treasured array. Lovely, isn't it? Treasured array. Interesting. I wonder if that's a reference to her being like this trans-dimensional cluster. Yes, Eridus breathes. I hope mine doesn't mean something disgusty like box of greasy meat, or dirty pants. You'd be embarrassed to be seen with me. You certainly wouldn't want that, Kalashi says coolly. Hold on, he says, ripping a much-folded page from his doublet. This sounds like an exciting quest to set off on someday, he writes, tongue furiously peeking from between his teeth. Discover secret meaning of name. Done! He tucks the page back into his doublet, grinning. So what's up with that glow around you? Glow? He repeats puzzled. God, you're funny. I'm not gonna lie. Um, so what am I supposed to do? Or is this not the right airship captain and I'm just being an idiot? Let's go back up here. Um, where was sad man? Sailor, 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 merchant, merchant, tourist, bodyguard. Hmm. Was it Master Renio? Oh, yes, as it says, we should talk to Renio. Gotcha. Right. Reading. Reading and retaining. My vessel will remain grounded until the thief responsible for stealing my other airship has made me whole. Updated my journal. She breaks off when he sees Eridus standing near you. Him! That's the thief! Thief? I've never stolen a thing in my life. I 
borrowed, certainly, but always with the intention of returning the item to its proper owner. Although, I admit, I haven't been always, you know, entirely successful. I demand compensation. My vessel, my source of livelihood, snatched by this, this vagrant. <laughs> he glares hard at the oblivious clave. I require justice. I will take it in the form of service. I don't think anyone's ever accused Eridus of being a vagrant. Um, of course he can help be responsible. Just because he's an idiot. I wonder how much it would cost to pay it off. Do I tell Eridus that you should work with him? Is there another way to resolve this? Um, do I have any other ways we can resolve this? I would prefer that the guilty party make amends, but I would accept monetary compensation for my losses. I doubt the young thief has the money at hand, however. Remember that. He prized the bridge of his nose with ink-smudged figures. I'd consider bringing the matter of compensation before the council clerk, but we've had a number of, hmm, arguments in the recent past. I doubt he'll help me. Uh, um, let's discuss something else. So how much would it cost to pay off his debt? Oh. Certainly, though you'd be responsible for the cost of the airship's current value, filing fees, and assorted labor. 300 shins, and not one less. That's far too much. No, he says, his nostrils flaring. And I must say I dislike the implication. I do not charge, overcharge, ever. My costs are high, and my prices are fairly measured. This portion of our discussion is over. Perhaps you'd like to discuss other options? 300? Hmm. Alright. Iffy on that one. We'll think about that. Okay, so we still haven't convinced Rin to join us. What is it we're supposed to do? Well, we can... Go back... Talk to the Order of Truth. Hmm. Settle their debt. Renio would accept monetary compensation from the city authorities, assuming they're willing to provide them. I'll have to petition the council clerk in Government Square. If I can do that without rolling on my buddy, I will. That's actually not... <gasps> what is this? Cave of Lost Worlds. Oh, hello. Oh my goodness, how do I get down there? I can't click down here. Oh, maybe I have to go around this way. Squirrel. This craft is capable of carrying one person, two at most. The interior is richly appointed with satin pillows and the air feels cooler inside. Hmm. Nifty. Toboso, this scrawny old man practically rattles inside dull and dented armor that was clearly made for someone bigger than him. Nonetheless, his eyes burn with a bottomless fire, and his face, as fierce as it is genuine, flashes beneath his growing, graying thicket of a beard. Another night, he bellows, clapping your shoulder with his gauntleted hands. You barely keep your feet. The man is stronger than he looks. Another hero in search of great adventure. You stand before the knight, Kujaro del Toboso. What brings you to the summit of Mount Ithiodor? I've never heard the name of this before. Ithiodor? I'm going to go with that. <laughs> Eridus. We seek challenges that will test our very limits, Eridus declares. Until then, we will shun these challenges as unworthy of us and seek quests that shake the foundations of possible, that defy belief. For we are not just adventurers, noble stranger. We are the breath of adventure herself. Tears well in Kijano's eyes, and he fishes a monogrammed handkerchief from the depths of his bracers. Such a noble company, he says hoarsely, dabbing his, dabbing his cheeks. Such a noble goal. Were I not committed to my own path, I would seek to join yours, he sighs. But I will not. Instead, might I seek your blessing? So why did you call this Mount Ithidor? It's a city, not a mountain. A city, he says, his sweat-beaded brow drawing together. Your senses must have deserted you in the ascent. The heat has baked you in your armor. He lays a gentle hand on your shoulder, turning you to the horizon. Do not allow a delirium to blind you to your accomplishments, good knight. 
You have scaled the very heights of Mount Theodore, tooth of the world beast. Adventure lies in every shadow below us, every sparkle of light a quest, ready for the taking. I wonder if he's talking about up back here. So what brings you up here? Do you know, he says, that I am not quite sure. My memory's not what it was. I recall kneeling before my family's armor in our estate some time ago, he blinks slowly. Perhaps I was weeping. He smashes his gauntlet against his chest, leaving a sizable dent. I can't recall, and it doesn't matter. For then I heard a thunderous roar, and beheld a great beast in the skies. I donned my armor and gave chase. What kind of beast? It defied description, he declares. And so, I shall describe it to defy impossibility itself. Okay, I love you. No wonder you and Eridus get along so well. Thirteen legs, six jaws, a thousand eyes that glitter with malice and flame. Scales the color of clouds. Wow. The horrible beast leered down at me, promising destruction. I promised it death, and it fled across the sky. I followed, darting between the trees. He pauses. I don't recall much after that. I recall walking, having various adventures on the way, of course. But I can't quite recall why I came here. Ah, he says. Of course, I must have had the frankly brilliant notion of scaling this lonely mountain to a better spot, to spot the beast from afar. He shakes his hand, his wispy, white, w wispy beard waggling. Alas... I've seen nothing so far. That's interesting. That was an interesting story. Thank you. You are most welcome, he says, patting her hand fondly. It's so good to share my tales with a fellow knight. Everyone else raises such peculiar doubts. You said you're looking for a great adventure? Yes, but I feel I must speak plainly, he says, plucking at his beard. Too many people have mistaken me for a common mercenary. He straightens. I'm not interested in entangling myself in local quarrels. I will not hunt a beast that cannot hunt me in return, and if I am to fight, it must be against a foe of such wickedness that the stars themselves would wink out rather than shine upon the world that could harbor such malevolent creatures. Ah. He'd help me find clues. A murderer. Murderers are dangerous. Stitcher are not. A murderer. Is that really deeds of renown without peer? I don't know. Let's talk about something else here real quick. Eridus, would you bless Kujano as he asked? I was hoping you would, he says, and turns to Kujano, spreading his arms, his mouth working soundlessly. The elderly knight bows his head. May your glory always find you. May your burdens only strength of you, and each of your scars tell a better story than the last. And when your enemies are too many, your wounds too severe, may you fall with a smile on your face and peace in your faltering heart. Well said, Kujano says, raising moist eyes. Well said. He straightens and oddly seems even larger than before. Taller even. Gains the inspired fettle. That's interesting. That was a great speech, by the way. Nicely done. I may steal that in the future. Okay, let's farewell for a moment. So, do I really not have a way to get over to this cave? That is going to drive me absolutely crazy. Let's take a look at the map here. Yup. Ah, that's going to bug me. Damn it. Yeah, because I can't get over here, can I? Yeah, it looks like it's only accessible from somewhere over here. There's no way down to this. Unreachable. Yeah, I agree. Maybe I can use this thing. Can I steal it? But borrow. You want a job done right. <laughs> okay, so let us let's make a decision here. So let's go see if we can settle this thing. Let's go talk to the city clerk or the council clerk. I'm not gonna rat out Eridus. I'll pay. Um, I'll pair Renio off before I'll do that. Um, I need to know how to get to the labyrinth. That's interesting. So, I need that Numenera from the kids. So I'll have to think about that. Um, I'm going to go back and talk to the Stitcha. Or Stitchus. Uh, ooh, that's proper declension, too. Excellent. Because I don't want to just leave it, and I don't want to just like turn it into what's-his-name kind of pissed off that I couldn't take the role to convince the other Stitcher to take him back in, but, well, here we are. So, okay, let's go ahead and take a break, and we'll continue this next time. Thanks for watching, and I will see you soon.